Hello everyone and thank you for joining me on another video. My name is Joe Unwin, also known as Flojo, and we're going to be looking at the Power Platform today. More specifically, we're looking at Copilot Studio and how we can actually create a prompt library with an adaptive card. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, maybe you're in a situation where you want to offer a series of selections to a user and they can click on one of them and in turn it will trigger an event i.e it will trigger a topic or maybe it will trigger an a generative answers particular thing something like that right so the whole idea of the prompt library is that you're going to offer a selection of prompts to a user and then you're going to react based on that now with my prompt library as you're going to see in a moment i'm going from top to bottom rather than from side to side now the reason why i'm doing this is that if you look on your screen right now the chat section is more longer and if you have a um, selection that goes from columns from one two three four from side to side it's going to get squished you're not going to see all the information and you're going to essentially not give a good user experience to the user so going from top to bottom just like you would be doing on a mobile device is going to have more information going from top to bottom rather than left to right okay so then you have to think about okay, what are you trying to achieve well if you select something the user is then going to be stating that the prompt is going to trigger so how do we actually achieve this we achieve this through the data tag on the submit section on the action set of an adaptive card so we're going to go through all of that as well as we can actually add images and we can also uh, ensure that the user gets the best look and feel so let's take a look at what this looks like first well let's go over to the designer so here is my example We've got an example of prompts, we've got prompt one example, and then we've got some information that we can actually put underneath it. So whatever this says at the top here is whatever it's going to say when we click on it. And then underneath will be the information that we'll give to the user. So for example, we've got prompt one example and then prompt one information. So the part at the bottom is just informational. It's just highlighting some information that the user may want additionally to the actual prompt. And then we've got exactly the same at the bottom here for prompt two example. And then we've got prompt two information. We've got a little image on the left hand side that I'm just using from an example from um, a Microsoft example. And you can obviously change these images how you see fit, but it shows a nice, easy to digest information with an image and you can simply click on it and it will deliver that information back. Now, being an adaptive card, uh, Copilot Studio only supports 1.5. It does not support 1.6. So the first thing you want to do is change it to 1.5. However, there is something to consider here. Where is your adaptive card being delivered? If it is being delivered to Microsoft Teams, you will need to change your target version to 1.2. Do not keep it at 1.5. Even though Copilot Studio supports that, Microsoft Teams does not. And again this is a big thing wherever you're targeting uh, in any of these areas you need to consider what target version you're going to be using at the location that you're going to be sending your adaptive cards so we've created an adaptive card i mentioned previously that data was a big thing so i'm going to go for an example now and then we're going to come back to this and actually see what i mean by that so let's go back to Copilot Studio. And as you can see here, I've got a prompt one example. Um, I've then got a prompt two example. And all these are doing are just stating, this is an example of someone selecting prompt one because it has a phrase of prompt one example and one. But let's actually go into the prompts example adaptive card topic. So rather than actually asking a question with an adaptive card i am using the message node and then here i click on add and i click adaptive card and this gives me the adaptive card here so this adaptive card is where i'm pasting my 
information. So at the bottom here, I've got a card payload editor. All of this information at the bottom here, all of this JSON is what is being created and generated here. So I paste that information into the media section and then you can see an example of the media shown here. So if I now type in the chat window, adaptive card example, it will show our adaptive card because it will trigger this topic. So you can see the adaptive card prompts now and I can select one of these. As a user, if I select prompt one example, it actually says prompt one example. It's saying the prompt for me as if I've typed that. And that is the key thing where I'm talking about the data because we are submitting and we are using the data to replicate um, what is on the prompt as if the user was saying that. And then it's actually triggered the topic. This is an example of someone selecting prompt one as we saw earlier. And then again, if I select prompt two, this is then uh, saying prompt two example and it's then redirecting to this is an example of someone selecting prompt two. Okay, so how does this all work? Well, if we go back to our adaptive card and we scroll down, if we get to the first one here, we've got um, the body, we've got the column, we've got the image, we've got the stretch that we've got prompt one example in the text block and then the text block underneath and is subtle uh, so it's subtle here the whole idea of it being subtle is that like it's showing it in a, a lower gray so that it looks like a more informational section and then when they actually select one of these you've got an action dot submit now the action dot submit is doing an action but the data here this data section is saying I want this data to come back and pass through as a user so if a user was to click on this it's going to then pass it back to the copilot as if the user has actually stated it themselves so We've got data and then we've got prompt one example, just as we've got for the title up here. So we've got the first text block, we've got prompt one example, and then we've got data and prompt one example. So we are replicating what we're saying in the first prompt one example section for the text block. So when I press on this, the action.submit is triggered and then the data is passed through of prompt one example. What that then does is it then looks as if I myself as a user has typed that, which in turn will trigger the topic of prompt one example, and then it will trigger whatever happens in that topic. And in this instance, it's just, this is an example of someone selecting prompt one. So that is how you can easily use adaptive cards to trigger prompts and in turn pass data back, which then in turn uh, allows it to pretend to be the user that said it. So you can create an entire prompt library with adaptive cards in Copilot Studio using images, using examples of the actual prompt and then using the actual prompt information to give more information. And as you can see there, when I clicked on it, it says prompt one example, and that is coming from the data section here from the select action and being passed back to Copilot Studio as if the user's saying it themselves, and then it triggers a topic. So all of this prompt information um, and example I will stick in the description of this video so you have it I will also put it on the blog post so you can actually go through and see it much easier but um, you have to just remember the versions now Copilot Studio uses version 1.5 up to version 1.5 but if you're using this in Microsoft Teams you need to think about using 1.2 because that's the maximum it currently uses Again, this is going to likely change in the future, but wherever you're using it, 
Think about Copilot Studio, maximum version 1.5, wherever you're going to be using it, think about the version that that uses. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you understand what we're trying to achieve with the actual prompts. Again, it doesn't just need to be prompts. You can do this with anything. You could have just buttons and like say a yes or a no. And when you press yes, it will then pass back the data of yes. But I'm using a prompt library as an example because it's the most detailed example I can do but you can rein that back in and just have simple buttons of yes or no to pass the data and the key part here is the data section data here in the select action of action submit will always be passed back as if the user is saying it if you have any questions or anything in this video um, just leave a comment below, hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel grow and I'll see you next time on another video on the PAL platform. Thanks for watching, really appreciate if you've made it to the end. Bye!